Thank you, Peter. Good morning. Um, welcome to everyone. Uh, I don't know if you know, but it's Safeguarding Sunday this morning, and uh, Pearl and I will be talking and speaking about this subject within the context of the Methodist Church. It seems very relevant after the news uh, item this week where we have been informed that the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Reverend Dr. Justin Welby, has resigned after a safeguarding issue within the Church of England. So let us begin our service with a call to worship. We will say to the Lord, you are my safe and strong place, my God in whom I trust. As we gather to worship today, let us remember that we serve a God of love who calls us to love one another as he first loved us. And at our opening prayer this morning, let us pray. Compassionate God, our refuge and strength, Defender of the weak, the weary, and the oppressed. We come to you with humble and thankful hearts. As your children, you call us to be like you, to speak up for the rights of all who are vulnerable. Help us as we strive to be a place of safety for all. May we listen to those who are hurting, learn from Jesus' example, and love one another as you first loved us. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is in the uh, hymn books, if you're using the hymn books. It's uh, hymn number 409, Let Us Build a House Where Love Can Dwell.
I'll say good morning to you as well. Now, my perfectly formed assistant is going to reveal what we've hidden underneath there. So, oh, well done. Not quite Debbie McGee, but, you know, much better. Right. So, as you can see, we have a collection of items on this table. And Steve is going to pick some of them up and um, just so that you can see. Okay? Yeah. 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 Does anyone know what those are? Knee pads, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and there's even a case for them, so they they're part of it too. Yeah? Don't put that one on. <laughs> Make a good one. It's a cycle helmet. Belonging to your grandsons. Yeah. I'm gonna turn it this round. What do you think's in there? Somebody said it I could hear. Which is amazing. Plasters. Looking forward to, to, to that one. <laughs> Don't forget to turn it off, dear. Well done. Not just any apron, it's a William Morris pattern apron. <laughs> Try the Millennium Falcon. She's not really, not really fussed. Right, so you can see this uh, lovely collection, and I'm sure you're going to tell us what they all have in common. Thank you, Sue. They're all safety equipment which is very um, apt as we're talking about uh, safeguarding today. So I'm just going to read um, Psalm, uh, from Psalm 91, verses 1 to 4. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. We've brought these um, objects just as a uh, to show you all the different things we have in our homes and everything to keep us safe. And um, we describe our church uh, as a place of safety. Uh, God dis described a place of safety and refuge. And as his people, we are called to be like him. 
Our church community should be a place where everyone can feel and be safe. But that doesn't happen on its own. So just as these objects, we need to have things in place that help us to do that. Today, obviously the theme of our worship, uh, we're going to be thinking about some of those things and asking God to help us to be a safe place for all. And with no apologies, Helen share, we are having holy overshadowing because it's perfect for our purpose this morning. So please, could we have the video, Alan? And now a time of prayer. Almighty God, we come together to praise you, to stand once more in your presence, to consider your handiwork and to remind ourselves of all that you have done in our lives, all that you are doing and all that you will continue to do. We would bring you our worship, receive our praise. Help us as we lift up our songs, to lift up our hearts also as we read your word, to hear your voice also. As we unite in prayer, to be united with you in mind and spirit. As we hear your message proclaimed, to respond to your call and to accept your challenge. We would bring you our worship, receive our praise. Help us to truly praise you, not just in words and appearance, but in our hearts, our thoughts, and our lives, so we may offer to you the truest expression of our praise, a life of faithful discipleship, a love for you and one another, and a living commitment to Christ. We would bring you our worship, receive our praise, in his name we ask it. Amen. Now, as Steve has already um, said, our, our theme today is safeguarding. Uh, but we didn't pick it out of the air because today is actually Safeguarding Sunday. And so that is why we've chosen to do this. So you might ask, what actually is safeguarding? Safeguarding can be a tricky and complex topic to explain, especially to children. And there are some examples that, and some descriptions that might help us to understand this. So safeguarding is about protecting ourselves and others from harm. We all get things wrong, and sometimes the things we do and say can hurt others, or we can be hurt by them. This can happen anywhere, at church, at school, at home, or with friends, and it can make us very sad and worried and confused. But just like the umbrella that Steve showed us earlier that keeps us safe from the rain, safeguarding protects us from being hurt by others. It's very important because each of us is a very special person to God and each person deserves to feel and to be safe. In our country, we have rules and laws to keep people safe. Just like if you're at school, a lollipop person helps to cross the road safely. In church, we have people that are appointed to make sure that we... Um, follow these rules that are in place. But each one of us has a job to do. If there's anything that we see that makes us worried or upset, or anything that happens to us, we need to do something about it. Um, and we need to tell someone we trust. By speaking up, we can help others to keep everyone safe. So remember that safeguarding is about protecting ourselves and others from harm. 
Now, the people who produced different sorts of material for Safeguarding Sunday, um, a, a few years ago, this hymn, this Safeguarding hymn, was written by a Reverend Daly. And um, we're going to sing it this morning. You'll see the words and think, I do not know this um, hymn at all. But it is set to the tune of Callan Lan. And a lot of us, hopefully, will know the tune of Callan Lan. So stand if you're able and join in the singing of the safeguarding hymn, please. Technology works, uh, we'll be able to um, see some of our own safeguarding team. Uh, there's one picture missing, and that is of Helen Halford. Now, Jane and Jill and Helen couldn't be with us today because Jane and Helen are with uh, our Reverend Joanne at Brood. Uh, introducing them to a deeper understanding of safeguarding, going through the safeguarding course along with their service this morning, and um, doing DBS checks and all sorts of things like that. But we thought, uh, as they weren't here, we'd try and show you their pictures. Now, everybody here knows Jane and Jill and Helen, and we just wanted to point them out so if ever there are any worries or concerns that uh, Jane, Jill and Helen are the people that you should go to in the first instance. And just for a moment, I'd just like to 
uh, pray for our safeguarding team. And obviously our minister, Joanne, is, is the one that they would go to uh, with any concerns. So if we could just, for a moment, lift up Joanne, Jane, Jill, and Helen, and ask the Lord's blessing on the tasks that they've under, undertaken. Be with them, Lord, because it is not always an easy thing to be doing. Help them to know that we appreciate what they're trying to do to us, for, uh, to us and for us, to help us in our understanding of this very important need. We ask your blessing on all of them, Lord. Amen. Now, Steve and I are going to share a safeguarding poem with you. It's holding the hand of someone you love or a parent's magic kiss on a grazed knee. It's a baby sound asleep in a loving embrace. That's safe. It's when you're wrapped up warm and tight indoors on a dark and cold night somewhere you know somewhere that's comfortable where you can just be that's safe. It's knowing you're not on your own because there's someone there at the end of the phone to call or to text when you're feeling alone. That's someone you can always rely on. That shoulder to cry on when things get tough. That's safe. Safe can be the shield the defence, the fortress, a lighthouse guiding you through the storm, or the harbour offering protection when the seas get rough. Or safe can be that big red traffic sign that says, stop, there's danger ahead. And isn't that what the church is called to be? A refuge for the refugee? A sanctuary for the broken, a space for the hurting to find healing, a place for the last, the least, the lost, those on the margins and those in the centre, a place to find meaning, for God's eternal banner over me and you is love. And there is no fear in love, for his perfect love casts out all fear and is safe. We've not lived up to that expectation. We've fallen short. Instead, we've prioritised our own reputation. And if that's not cause for lamentation, I don't know what is. I don't mean to be the voice of condemnation. It's just time to prioritise the conversation, giving space for those who need to, to share, to, believe, to be believed, to be renewed, and to find restoration. If those things were once kept out of sight and covered up and brought into the open, and we make space for the unspeakable things to be spoken, their power can be broken. Because a church that faces its shortcomings and gives space to listen reflects something of the kingdom of God. A church which truly loves is a church striving to be safe. So it's time to put safeguarding on the church's agenda. To change the culture of yesterday. To pause and remember because safe is bold. It's a firm foundation beneath our feet. It means we can stand and take the leap of faith to have those conversations and to be a church that's safe.
And our second reading today is from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. And it's entitled, The Armour of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with a readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be, give, may be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. And now... It's uh, my inter interpretation of this reading. The author of Ephesians is simply trying to tell us to be strong. During this time of writing, Paul was in prison, chained to a Roman soldier, who was there to ensure he could not escape. He probably talked to the soldiers, who were so near to him, and it may be that he, as he wrote this letter, the armour of the soldier suggested an image to him. He uses the armour of the Roman soldier as a metaphor and trans translates it into Christian terms. The belt of truth. This went round the soldier's tunic and it was where the sword hung from, giving freedom of movement. Christians can move freely and quickly because they know the truth. The breastplate of righteousness. When we are clothed in righteousness, we are impregnable. The only way to meet the accusations against Christianity is to show how good a Christian can be. The proclamation of the gospel. Sandals were a sign of one equipped, ready to move. Christians are eager to be on the way, to share the good news with others who have not heard it. The shield of faith. It is thought this is the type of shield which is large and oblong, which the heavily armoured warrior may have worn. Arrows were fired at the armies, and they were tipped with pitch-soaked rope and set alight. Nevertheless, when they hit the shield, they were extinguished. The Christian faith can deal with darts of persuasion. Our faith has complete trust in Jesus, and when we walk closely with him, we are safe from temptation. The helmet of salvation 
Salvation in Christ gives us forgiveness for the sins of the past and strength to conquer sin in the days to come. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The words of Scripture give us defence against sin and is our weapon of attack against the sins of the world. During the English Civil War, Oliver Cromwell's army fought with a sword in one hand and a Bible in the other. We can never win God's battles without the Bible. Amen. And now we come to another hymn, uh, and it's in the hymn books, and it's in Singing the Faith 611, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. And now our intercessory prayers. God our Father, grant us the help of your Holy Spirit in our prayers for the salvation of all people. We pray for the church throughout the world. And we are mindful that the Methodist Church, we are covenant partners with the Church of England, which is an anniversary which was marked last week. As we know, Dr. Wel Welby, who has just resigned, has done much to strengthen the partnership between our denominations. And we pray for the continuation of this work and for those who will discern who should be the next Archbishop of Canterbury. 
we're committed to developing our shared understanding and desire for good safeguarding practice at every level in our churches. So loving God, we ask your forgiveness for the times when your church, as, our, as your church, we failed to protect vulnerable people. We pray for your healing for those who have been hurt and for those who live with guilt and regret. We ask for your wisdom and direction as we seek to keep all your children safe in the name of Christ. Amen. As we pray for that unity, we pray that we may constantly be renewed by your Holy Spirit for mission and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the peoples of the world, for the leaders of the nations, that the conflicts that are going on around the world at this time there may be mediation and uh, efforts for peace, that the leaders may say, seek justice, peace, and freedom for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country, for those who have authority and influence, for those people who are going to be affected by our changing financial times. We would ask, Lord, that ways will be found to make sure that everyone has warm homes and roofs over their heads. Help us, Lord, to serve one another in wisdom, honesty, and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those amongst whom we live and work, for our neighbours, for those who are not in the same situation as ourselves. We pray that they may use all their gifts and work together so that we may find joy in your creation in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in sorrow, need, sickness or anxiety. We pray for those people that we know who are in care homes, uh, those who are in hospital awaiting uh, results of tests. Lord, we, we ask you to hold them in your wonderful, comforting arms so that their, your grace and comfort may be with them at all times. May they, in their weakness, may they know your strength and in their despair, find hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you, Father, we are one family on earth and in heaven. We remember in your presence anyone known to you whose families have been recently be bereaved. We give thanks for their loved ones, and especially those who have revealed to us your grace in Christ. Help us to follow the example of your saints in light and bring us with them to the fullness of your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer of confession. And there is a response which you can see on the, on the screen. You made your church to be a place of safety and refuge. Yet people have been hurt and harmed. Lord, have mercy. You call your church to be a voice for the voiceless and the oppressed. Yet we have remained silent and not spoken about injustice. Cry. You send your church to be an example of love to the world. Yet we have been selfish and not shown love to those who are hurting. Lord, have mercy. And a prayer of absolution. 
May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image and to praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the thine is kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn is uh, Singing the Faith 615, Let Love Be Real. And it might be to the London Derriere, you never know.
grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'd like you to join with us in saying the closing prayer together, please. Lord, help us to be people that demonstrate our faith through the way we love and care for one another. Give us grace as we work to make your church a safe place for all. Help us to have the courage to follow Christ's example and to love as he first loved us. Amen. And may we share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Can we thank everyone who's helped us this morning? Thank you.